Awesome. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Thanks for the intro. Um, happy you're all here for my talk. Um, we're going to look at end-to-end uh, -end testing for web applications. Uh, what inspired this talk was uh, well, many reasons. The, the two main reasons, I, I want to inspire more developers to write tests, and in this particular case, end-to-end -end tests for their web apps, even, even beyond end-to-end -end tests for your mobile applications that you build. Uh, and the other reason is I wanted to showcase how the developer experience has evolved uh, over the uh, many years uh, since I've been doing, uh, kind of writing these end-to-end -end tests. Okay, about, a bit about me. Uh, so I'm Vlad, uh, I'm a yeah, software engineer, full stack web developer, and an open source contributor. Um, currently working at Stripe, previously, working, uh, previously worked at uh, Mozilla on uh, Firefox accounts and Firefox web browsers. And I'm also an open source contributor to several, mostly JavaScript projects, but also there's some Rust and uh, other random stuff in here. Uh, I started off contributing to projects like jQuery, and uh, um, I'm maintaining right now the Grunt.js uh, 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 build tool that's, uh, that was very hip several years ago, but people, so a lot of people still use it. Uh, and uh, Projects that are relevant to this talk, uh, there's this green icon, uh, which is the intern.js JavaScript framework. Uh, that, off, uh, that was a bit of an older project now, but that offered kind of full stack testing, all types of testing for pro uh, different projects. And recently, I've contributed some of my modules to the WebDriver.io uh, community ecosystem uh, to make that framework better. And in my kind of career and day-to-day -day work for the past 10 years, I've been working on authentication systems, kind of full stack. Uh, features for all those authentication systems, including testing them. So on the right, uh, <laughs> uh, this is the Firefox accounts uh, login screen. You got to enter your email, and uh, after that, you enter your password and sign in to get access to your uh, bookmarks and sync data. Uh, these days, I work on a different sign-in screen, which is the Stripe sign-in screen, uh, where you get to, uh, merchants get to see how much money their business is making. Uh, maybe a show of hands who uses both of these systems. Nice, okay, <laughs> wow, after, okay, that's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, so these systems uh, serve as like a key entry points either to see how much money you're making or to see all your bookmarks on different devices. Um, so critical systems that get, uh, uh, give access to a lot of kind of features and different applications and so on. So when we talk about testing web applications, and in my case, it's the authentication systems uh, uh, in, in a web browser, our workflow is going to look something like, w without any tests, uh, we would maybe write some unit tests for our things and, and uh, cover, cover our code that way. But then ultimately, if our applications are te uh, running in the web browser, we want to go into the you know, open Chrome, open Firefox, and uh, test that the, the new feature that you wrote that, w that it works properly in, in, no in those browsers. Very uh, kind of s could be a very repetitive and slow process. So this is where we introduce uh, these like, functional tests that are like end-to-end -end tests that drive the web browser um, through, like we write a series of tests, we tell some machine, uh, some script to go talk to the browsers and uh, tell them to do things. Click on buttons, scroll the page, uh, fill out forms, and test the new features uh, that we write. So a great solution. The way we do it, it, different kind of takes on this, but ultimately we give commands to the, the driver uh, that, for example, we start by logging into a page, uh, filling out some form, clicking the login button, and we expect, make sure I, I get into the dashboard successfully. If something bad happens, uh, we're going to throw an error and uh, like says test failed. It's kind of a simple example of these commands. And if we do all these things uh, correctly, we get something cool like this. Uh, always exciting to see the <laughs> web browser running in kind of this automated mode. Uh, this is the uh, tests of the Firefox account system. There is probably, uh, there's so many of these tests, uh, dozens and dozens of these tests that test the happy path of signing in and a lot of the error states. Uh, th by the way, most of the Firefox accounts project is open source, uh, so all these, all these tests are open source as well. Uh, so if, if you're really interested, you can poke around the code. And this, yeah, th when I was working on the, uh, the Firefox, Firefox account system, uh, we've written a lot of these tests uh, to, to ensure that uh, we don't need to do any of the manual clicking. Uh, we'll let the web browser uh, and this automated tool uh, do this for us. So that's kind of the intro of, like, the, uh, kind of to these end-to-end -end tests. And this workflow and the developer experience behind uh, 
automating the web browser has evolved uh, quite a bit over the years. So for this talk, I picked uh, the nice uh, year's ending on uh, uh, number four. Uh, we have, we're going to go back to 2004, uh, then 2014, and uh, just aim for 2024. Like, what's in the future in, uh, kind of in this space? First of all, uh, those who are, familiar, who are familiar with this process have probably heard uh, and like done this uh, for many years. You probably heard the word Selenium. That was like kind of the initial tool that was like, oh, maybe we should have a process to test our apps in the, in the browser. So uh, that kind of was created as an internal project and later evolved for many, many years to Selenium WebDriver and then highly influenced the WebDriver testing spec. And Alongside, there was other cool projects. Uh, who here used PhantomJS? Nice, okay, uh, the amazing logo that they had. Uh, that was a cool uh, headless solution to uh, run through, uh, kind of not spawn a new browser window, but allow, allow you to uh, get access to the web APIs and run your application through a series of uh, uh, tests without opening a browser window. It was kind of very cool, and everyone was super excited about it. Fast forward to 2014. Uh, this is a slide from my presentation. I think it was at Full Stack TO. And uh, at that time, uh, we were getting even uh, kind of the, the developer tools were exponentially growing. We had better CI systems that could easily, with like Travis CI, were able to quickly set up to run these tests in, CI, in the CI environment. Sauce Labs allowed us to test our applications in different uh, operating systems, different types of browsers, different types of devices. And uh, we got more web API features, web components, uh, some of the cool offline stuff that's in, uh, uh, in the DOM, in the browser. And mobile testing was kind of growing, testing mobile websites, mobile applications. Um, and uh, today, uh, we have more tools. These three are open source. Uh, I think yesterday, uh, we also mentioned Cypress. Uh, these tools uh, have been developed in, in the last couple of years. And, uh, uh, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to highlight uh, some of them in my talk today. First of all, I wanted to also mention, like, why, do we, why do we write these tests? Why, why do I write these tests? So first of all, like any type of test, we want to track down uh, code regressions. So uh, you write a new feature, make sure you want to make sure you didn't break anything uh, that was, was already there. And um, specifically with the web application workflow, we get to perform a series of tests in different cross-browser environments, as well as different browser configurations. Uh, so unlike uh, kind of testing maybe other types of like native software, we get to have fun and uh, uh, test this stuff in like uh, WebKit, Gecko, or Blink, or, or Chrome-like browsers. Now, these types of tests uh, cut down the amount of manual tests we need to do. And also what I like about the, the test is that they mimic real user behavior. So when the fake <laughs> automated uh, window uh, clicks on buttons, that's very uh, similar how real users click on buttons, which is like as close as you can get to kind of real user uh, uh, tests. And the other thing, like working on both FXA, uh, the Firefox Accounts Project, and, and the Stripe stuff, there's so many services involved in this. So we have front-end apps, so these back-end services, third-party services. Uh, and uh, they, these type of tests kind of sort of allow you to test the whole system together, making sure all these services are working together in a, in a browser and everything's working well. In case like some third party component uh, uh, breaks, uh, you can, uh, you, you, these tests will def uh, detect that. The main reason why I started working on these types of tests uh, years ago now is just the confidence in shipping code. That's me right there sleeping good at night because I know that I wrote 20 uh, test for this new feature that I wrote, and they're passing, and I'm like, ooh, okay, cool. That, you know, I didn't break anything, and, and the existing tests are passing. So C the confidence uh, in shipping is always great. Now, with these type of tests, we get a bunch of challenges. Uh, testing in the web browser could be uh, interesting because there's so many systems involved. Uh, first of all, uh, the first challenge that we're going to take a look at uh, would be actually writing these tests. Like any other test, we're like, oh, okay, i got to sit down and write these tests. Uh, for example, I implemented a forgot your password uh, flow in the, uh, in the Stripe merchant dashboard. OK, in the next half of my day, I'm going to go start writing these tests. And as part of that, with like, the complexity of web apps today, I need to go and track down, like, how, how do I figure out how, like, which, which, uh, how do I find this button for like, the forgot your password button, right? When I open the inspector, it's like, oh, yeah, there's an anchor, and there's like, three nested divs in there. 
what is the right selection mechanism here I can use and like find the password reset button uh, to write my test. And I have to do it basically for the whole happy path of, for example, a forgot password. Imagine I wrote these tests, and then what happens, uh, these tests could potentially flake out. The reasons why could be so, so many reasons why, right? There is uh, the, the tests I write, the logic could be bad. The network could, be, could fail in the browser. Some JavaScript thing could be slow or like, uh, not load in time. Uh, this is a famous Selenium error that kind of uh, I have uh, printed in my brain of like for <laughs> uh, kind of working on this uh, years ago. Uh, is like Selenium tries to find some element and it takes 52 milliseconds to find some button and you're like, wow, okay, my React app is not going to be there in 52 milliseconds. So uh, and the, but the robot doesn't care. It just says, well, I looked everywhere for this thing and my I'm so speedy I can uh, try to track it down. I couldn't find it. I give up. And with like complex cases where uh, you know you have some like fancy form that you're sending in, and you have like validation that like highlights and maybe overlaps some input elements. Um, maybe it's a, like a pop-up that you need to detect that the pop-up correctly works and says you got the wrong password. Uh, all that with like CSS and JavaScript animations can also flake out these tests. So the flakiness is those who worked with these type of tests, you're like, yeah, I know the word uh, kind of flaky tests because this is uh, this will kind of uh, I'll have to battle that. Once we've done, you know, written this test, reduced the flakiness as much as we could, uh, then we're like, you know what? I'm going to put these tests in CI, and we just had a talk on Circle CI. Um, we saw, I think, some Circle CI UI and so on. This is not a Circle CI. This is a failure of a test. Um, and uh, if you run these tests in CI, uh, I think was, uh, they mentioned how uh, uh, you could uh, see, kind of, you can like SSH into the machine and debug the, why did this test fail. Um, kind of similar for functional tests. If something fails like this, you want to be able to track down. Okay, is, it, is this a flake or is this like something really? I wrote some code and it broke some feature. And you know, by this looking by this code, it's kind of hard to track it down. Um, so we need to be able to kind of find a way. What is like find a way? What 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 was actually wrong? Uh, what went wrong with the test that you wrote, uh, or uh, uh, when it runs uh, several times? So. Yes, yeah, so we've got a lot of problems <laughs> to solve. Uh, so flakiness, uh, spending time writing these tests, CI, debugging them both in like local on your local machine and in CI, and over the time uh, we're just talking about like the um, Circle CI build giving you information if your build is successful or not in 10 minutes. Uh, you might have the kind of a series of tests that are slow and uh, and take forever to run. Uh, and as your system grows, you're going to have dozens and dozens of these tests. You need to be able to come somehow quickly run them, uh, maybe in parallel, maybe some other opti optimization techniques. Uh, um, another challenge that we need to solve. <coughs> so testing tools to the rescue. Um, <laughs> uh, some of the things that uh, we have at our uh, kind of tool belt today, uh, so all three tools I'm going to talk about are open source. Uh, you can check, out, uh, check them out. I think most all of the three are on GitHub. Uh, first one is Puppeteer. Some of you might use this as well. So this is not like, I don't consider this like a testing framework, but it kind of can get you to a point where I was just showing Firefox account screen flying by, forms filling out. Puppeteer can let you control the browser in the ways you need. Uh, and you can even write uh, you know, can your own testing framework if you could with Puppeteer. Um, I've seen people do that. And uh, you know, it's a node module. Uh, you require it. You can go to create. Uh, new pages, uh, go to some URLs, take a screenshot, and then if everything go went well, it will close the browser. Supports uh, Chrome and Firefox, and it's great. Then on the other spectrum, we have WebDriver.io. So I'm a contributor to uh, kind of some, one of my modules is in this ecosystem. And WebDriver.io uh, kind of gives you the full, like the way I consider it, is like full flexibility. If you have a lot of time to spend to uh, into like, investing into your own like test harness and like be really picky about uh, what your test how your tests are running, uh, you can spend uh, days and weeks configuring this and uh, get the get the system that you want out of it. Some examples here, you know, we can switch between the web driver protocol and the Chrome DevTools protocol. We can run Chrome in the headless or disabled GPU environment. So it kind of gives you uh, kind of a lot of things to tweak with uh, to play with and um, uh, kind of, uh, if you're interested in this stuff, it's great. Uh, but you know, some some developers don't have time to spend configuring all this, so uh, you kind of have to pick your battle there. And uh, in this talk, uh, I wanted to kind of focus on the the Playwright uh, project. I think there was a mention of it yesterday as well. 
And uh, as an, I'm not affiliated with the project at all. I just kind of, over the years of kind of working with these type of tests, it, uh, I really like the, the, the framework, and I want to share it with you and just show you some of the, some of the features. So what I like about it is like the speed that I can write tests with and the, the way the tests run, comparing to kind of the previous uh, infrastructure that I used before. This is kind of a, uh, a breath of fresh air. And uh, correctness, like the reduction and uh, kind of the investment in the reduction of flakiness is great. Um, it is also a multi-environment tool, so it supports uh, uh, all sorts of browsers. And it also offers people language uh, choice. So I'm mainly kind of trying to understand, like people in the room, like mostly seems to be writing JavaScript. But if, you know, if you're a Python developer, uh, .NET or Java developer, you can actually use Playwright and write code um, in those, uh, write, write tests in, that, in those languages. Uh, you don't have to uh, use uh, TypeScript or JavaScript if you don't want to. A bunch of other reasons that I was kind of thinking of, like usability-wise, it's great. Debugging the tests, I'll show that in a demo. And um, it feels lightweight in a sense that, from like a developer experience point of view, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. You know, it, it installs the browsers for you, and uh, uh, kind of uh, there's all this like infrastructure to run these things. But it feels lightweight in terms of just like, oh yeah, there's a config file, and there's like a, my test directory, and off I go. And I found it like really works well with like QA uh, integration for, like, with the QA team. Uh, it's uh, the code is clean enough that like a QA team can understand and um, uh, fix the tests or run them and or or even use them for their kind of advantage. So <clears throat> for this talk, I uh, set up this uh, fake Refactor 23 login portal. Uh, so another login form, and I just can't get enough of them, I guess. Uh, I'm going to show some demos of how we can test this form, uh, imagining like we just uh, like written this kind of new feature for here, maybe like the sign-in flow in here. So a basic uh, login form right there. And uh, the back-end code for it, let's, uh, here's a, here it is on the left in VS Code. And what I have so far in here, I have a bunch of features in here, but the login test is empty. And I already have Playwright installed in this project. I'm uh, not going to spend time on that. But what I'm going to take a look uh, at is uh, actually creating a test uh, with this framework. So I'm not going to go and uh, look for the Playwright API docs or anything like that to figure out like how do I, what do I import in here? What, what's the test structure look like? And instead, I'm going to use this code gen command and uh, just run that. And what the, the npx playwright code gen command will do, it will spawn a new uh, Chromium browser, and it will sp and spawn this playwright inspector for me. So far, so good. I will zoom this in so people can see. So I know, and like from a developer experience point of view, cool. Like this framework comes with this uh, excellent tooling. I wrote, already wrote some code for me here. Uh, uh, imported, imported the right stuff. Uh, so now we can begin uh, writing a test. I'm going to copy paste the URL into uh, here, Doo -doo -doo. and paste this in here, and navigate to my authentication screen. What happened here in the inspector? We already have a go-to command written for us. It's like the test knows. Oh yeah, here's where uh, we would go to get to this uh, website. And uh, you know, I'm going to start with filling out this form. Uh, typing on stage, here we go, vlad at example.com. I'm going to hit uh, the password screen, and I'm going to do uh, type in password. And then I'm going to be very annoying for the purpose of this test. I'm going to hit tab. And I'm sort of testing is like, oh, yeah, does the tab key goes through, uh, goes, uh, does it go to the remember me uh, section? And then even more annoying, instead of clicking on it or whatever, I'm just going to click uh, space and check that. And then I'll go back to normal and just click sign in. So all those things have been written for me on the right. And I got to, I logged in. So a very kind of simple example. <laughs> uh, you're logged in, you got a balance of two uh, of something. I don't know, maybe it'll be useful uh, in the, uh, for the after party or something. But anyway, uh, so, but you know, I, I want, to, I'm looking at my test here and I, I'm like, oh, okay. So after I click sign in, the test kind of quits. And it doesn't actually, there's no assertion that, um, that th I have successfully sent in or not. I kind of clicked on the send in button, and that's where it ended. So uh, what I can do here is uh, I could write an assertion manually, but what I do is like, you can do a lazy assertion by just clicking this you are logged in thing, 
And then it will, in the test, we will actually assert that you're able to click on the you are logged in uh, view. So that means you did get to the signed in state. So I'm done running my test. And I'm going to go into uh, VS Code. I'm going to paste this in here. I don't need this code gen command anymore. Save this now. And uh, I am going to run this test to see if it actually works. Uh, in my terminal here, test the new login spec.js file. It says I'm testing both Chrome and Firefox in the background here. And uh, two tests passed, all good. Uh, we wrote a login test. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I, maybe I don't even want to use my terminal. Uh, so uh, Playwright is kind of uh, is, is sponsored by Microsoft. Microsoft owns Visual Studio Code or, and a bunch of other stuff. Hey, there's an amazing uh, Visual Studio Code extension uh, for Playwright. You can just click on the buttons there, and it will show you how it runs through these steps. And it and shows you a bunch of cool stuff in here. You can uh, show the browser when it runs the test, uh, show the trace viewer, record a new test. So like, I don't even need a terminal for any of this stuff. I can just use the, if, you, if you're into Visual Studio Code, it's all built in uh, using an extension. Um, the next thing, uh, you know, we have the test passing. Uh, uh, we've seen this similar thing yesterday with a report, it will generate these reports. And in particular, I just ran one test that I selected, shows all the steps that it ran through and uh, how long they took. And for the next thing, uh, we're going to take a look at um, kind of the, the highlight of um, uh, the challenge uh, when we, we want to uh, run the test in CI. And if something goes wrong in CI, um, we do get to create a, uh, a trace, an artifact of our CI builds. And if something goes wrong, this trace will be saved and uh, stored in your CI artifacts. So you can later uh, look at them and see what went wrong. So right now, I'm running a test command uh, with trace on. And, and I have not specified which test I'm running. So it's running the whole, all of the tests in my project. Uh, so you might have noticed here on the left, I have a bunch of stuff in here. It is taking a while, and then bam, I get I didn't I don't have I got I didn't get a success. Uh, it actually showed there was an error. That some tests have failed. So then you get this report: more tests have ran. The ones that failed are up top. Chromium, Chromium and Firefox, both browsers have failed. And now I do get this uh, new icon that with tracer on, I can view the trace. I can go into the test, and um, uh, the traces will be attached on the bottom. And if it's Hopefully, to see this URL ends with a zip file. So it, uh, these traces are like artifacts in your CI that you can later look at. And here, uh, like th the tracer is getting better and better. Right now, it will show you here are the, the steps I took to go through the test. And later on, uh, like a, there's a red dot there to click on the icon, uh, on the button. And then it tried to look the for, for some reason for the forgot uh, password uh, link. Uh, on after signing in, which is totally wrong. So we can kind of debug this test like this. And we also get some additional information here uh, on every step, uh, what kind of networking operations uh, were happening as well. So uh, pretty cool. Uh, the trace viewer is uh, very good uh, in terms of, uh, like for me, when I was debugging Firefox accounts test, you know, like I had to take screenshots manually uh, as I went along. Now this is all kind of built in. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah. So next thing, uh, like the other uh, kind of testing frameworks, we we code gen a bunch of stuff, but we can write assertions. Uh, one way we can like test uh, that balance that I was showing you, the balance of two. I'm gonna uh, add an assertion that on the logged in page there is a, there's an HTML element that uh, is the balance, so I can uh, run through that, and uh, uh, that runs through the steps again. And then in eight milliseconds asserts that, uh, yep, the balance is two. Everything is uh, good there. For folks who uh, use Python, very similar commands. With the Python world, you install the Playwright uh, executable. Uh, you code gen the same way. The code gen command in both uh, or like many environments supports the device. Uh, and I believe you can pass in the URL so it automatically opens the, the page, the browser, the right page. And then for those familiar with Pyth Python testing, PyTest, is, um, is uh, the, the way you would run the test. So that was an example of testing our login system. And some of the highlights from here, uh, over the years, like I had to deal with flakiness manually myself. Luckily, 
uh, the Playwright developers uh, thought of these flakiness issues, and what they did, they added additional logic to check uh, for things like buttons. Are they, when I'm clicking on a button, is this button attached, visible, stable? Uh, usually I think it means like if it's being animated or not. And if it can receive events and it, it's enabled, so it will uh, not flake out as much. Um, so it, this kind of additions are great. The other four features are kind of uh, my examples that I had to write Node.js code and the kind of infrastructure to make this work. With tools these days, like Playwright, you can uh, have screenshot tooling built in. So that means um, I can uh, take a screenshot with the built-in APIs, but also I can do uh, pixel diffing built into the system itself as well. So in this case, it's like max diff pixels percentage is 100. So I want to make sure that the, the change between the snapshots of the screenshots of the app are, uh, that are not different from what the application is showing you in the test run. Uh, parallel testing also built in. Uh, in Playwright, you can just pass in fully parallel true, so it will do, it will shard the test as much as it can, so your tests uh, run as fast as possible in CI and hit that uh, less than 10 minute mark that uh, we just saw in a previous talk. Uh, adding accessibility testing, also super easy. Uh, three lines of code, well, go to some URL, uh, there's an XBuilder module that will take the, uh, the page object and it will generate number of accessibility violations in your page. So you can start with like, uh, you know, at first it will probably throw like 100 errors at you. You can work in your test to drive down this number to zero and not introduce additional accessibility violations uh, by just checking to make sure that the violations uh, array is uh, empty. And uh, browser configuration, so when I was working on the uh, Firefox accounts project, we actually had to create a custom Firefox profile when a test ran. So uh, that uh, required, you know, I have to write some code in here. These days with frameworks, you just pass in, you know, I want a color scheme dark. That means the browser will run in the dark, uh, dark theme mode. Geolocation attributes, viewport, and things like that. And this is where we, yeah, all these developer experience tools, they're great. You got the trace viewer, they got the inspector and code gen tool that will generate code in different languages and for particular environments if you either want a test runner or uh, like a library mode. And on the right here, we have the GUI mode, which allows you to um, write tests uh, uh, sort of in this like live reload mode. So as you work through your test, it will automatically go ahead and like rerun them all the time. So it gives you quick feedback. Uh, so you spend less time writing tests, switching between the terminal, the browser windows, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, very handy. GUI mode is, I think, brand new this last year or this year. And uh, when I was working on this talk, I got, it got me thinking is, uh, what is the ultimate developer experiences? Is it this? Uh, and I think we had a, we had a chat uh, in the previous talk. Uh, we had a mention of like the ultimate developer experiences. It is something that can help maybe write the tests for us. Um, and uh, you know, I don't want a code gen. I just want the, maybe some kind of an AI system to just write this test for me. Um, so this is where I started the Playwright AI project. Uh, got some stickers uh, on the back there. And so Playwright AI <laughs> is kind of a, a preview of what's to come, I believe, in the next, uh, I'm, I'm afraid to say years, because it might be months, um, of like what developer tooling would, uh, could look like. And hopefully it will inspire you kind of to get ready for <laughs> these types of changes. So uh, to demo this, I'm going to show you a more, just a bit more complicated site. So it's kind of, OK, it's a refactor, very ugly looking refactor conf website. And here, you know, imagine you worked all day on this. You're like, OK, I got this first mock of this website done. And, and you know, it looks good enough. So we have the logo, we have the nav, we have a search bar component, we have the login component that uh, kind of looks similar to what we saw in the first demo, and we have some footer links in the bottom. So you know, the next step would be, you know, I want to make sure I can test all these components. Uh, so I guess I'm going to run code gen, I don't know, at least four or five times uh, in like tests, create tests for all those components. Or I can go get a coffee and let the AI do it. <laughs> so. <laughs> So um, I'm going to switch to uh, the code base for that project. Uh, I'm going to, let's zoom in a bit just so everyone can see. So here on the left, I have the index page. That's the form, that username and password. That's, I think, the, the index page of the site. There's a bunch of other pages here on the on this site. And uh, it's running on port uh, 3001. So I'm going to give this to my Playwright AI tool. <laughs> And at this time, um, here are the three parameters that I'm giving to the tool. 
The first one is the endpoint. That one is, I don't know, if AI can figure out which, where my application is running. I haven't, I'm not really sure what to, how to figure that out yet. Then I have this component uh, here, uh, sorry, I have the second argument here, which is C equals five. So uh, this is like short uh, mode for a number of components I want generated. In the future, you probably won't have to need to pass this. Uh, the system should know itself like, oh, I have tests for te uh, 10 of these components. Uh, and the new one that you wrote, I don't have tests for it yet. I'm going to write one. And also for the personal presentation, I just kind of, uh, I'm con letting this to be flexible. Finally, I'm going to give it the AI model that I want to use to generate these tests. Uh, model Claude, this came out actually on Tuesday, so it was kind of a rush for me to implement this in this tool. Uh, but Claude 2 um, uh, is, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's got better coding abilities. And it's developed by the company called Anthropic. We, we, saw, the, we saw the mention of it in uh, early uh, the, the talks before, the, before lunch. So um, this work tool works with both GPT-4 and uh, Claude 2. And with Claude 2, I just uh, think I get better results right now. So and just a testing from Tuesday. So I'm going to run this. And uh, let's pray uh, that <laughs> it will actually do its thing. Uh, it, the, the tests that it generates are kind of uh, could be a bit random, but um, uh, so what it's doing, it's fetching the endpoint on my website, it connects to the AI system, and uh, now it's going to start writing tests, and it's doing it sequentially. So it's, uh, we, it wrote tests for component one, uh, that was the login form, spec log, login form spec.js, so it kind of saved time there. It created a test for the navigation bar, and now uh, the navigation bar test actually failed. You see, uh, so when the test fails, we actually go back to the AI model and say, this this, the thing you wrote is bad, go do it again. And it goes back, and it actually, I believe it seems like there's two attempts. Uh, it, it, um, I think it, uh, it, it fixes the code, basically. It tries to fix the code as much as it can. And uh, the next component, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, the next component was the, so we have the login form, navigation bar, search form. Um, and, uh, uh, okay, while it's generating, let's take a look at the code that it made. So login form, uh, sometimes it's got very, it, it, found the username and password uh, fields. It found the sign-in button, it clicked it. And uh, this assertion sometimes generates the right thing or not, but sometimes it will assert that uh, it actually arrived to the page that it expects. In my case of the app, it's slash auth, so I can actually easily fix this test if I wanted to. Uh, navigation bar, I believe it usually clicks on all the buttons in different ways. And the search form, it also finds the form. And uh, this one's kind of cool. It, it, after filling up the search form, it actually makes sure that the get uh, URL contains the search for uh, part that it looked for. Uh, so it tapped it playwright in the search form, and the query in the browser was playwright. So, and the last component that it's writing here is footer links. Uh, this is like LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, so this one, I think it chose to just uh, click on these things, and the test failed, so it's going to rewrite them again. Uh, this footer links uh, test um, can also be sometimes surprising, but uh, in, in some cases it goes and asserts that, oh yeah, when I click on this thing, I arrive to LinkedIn, and LinkedIn has the right URL that I gave it. Um, so this is here kind of a preview. Uh, these tests can get a lot more complex. Right now we saw uh, four uh, examples of here uh, of kind of the simpler tests, but as uh, developers kind of start creating more uh, tooling around this, uh, we're going to be able to uh, kind of generate much more uh, complex types of tests. And um, yeah, I'm excited to what kind of what's to come in terms of uh, uh, these type of work. So this is, I'm going to wrap right here. Uh, so if you want to see the slides, uh, vf.io slash refactor23. And if you want to contact, get in touch with me, um, uh, just uh, go to vf.io. And uh, thank you so much. Hopefully this was inspiring. And uh, wish you luck with all your tests. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>